name's Jonathan Billings. I'm a technician here at the Magnet Lab with the Instrumentation Group. We're here in cell 15, which is the home of the Hybrid Magnet. It is the world's most powerful steady-state magnet. It runs at 45 Tesla, which is one million times more powerful than the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, if you don't have a sense of scale for it yet, because this is a big and powerful magnet, one Tesla is sufficiently powerful to pick up your car in a junkyard and drop it into the scrapper. The MRI magnets that are so powerful you can't bring any metal anywhere near them, they're about four Tesla. This one's significantly more powerful at 45 Tesla. We call it the hybrid magnet because it's using a combination of superconducting and resistive technologies. The superconducting magnet is in the larger uh, cylinder that you see up top, the really big one. That superconducting magnet is using the advantages that we have with superconducting wire in that we can charge it up to a very nice high field without using a lot of electrical power and electricity costs money here. What we do is we keep it cold beyond its critical point. This one is about 1.4 Kelvin when it runs and the superconducting magnet will get us up to 11.5 Tesla. The advantages of superconductors, of course, is that they run inexpensively, they run quietly, and they give us a very nice field as far as homogeneity and uh, parts per million cleanliness of the field. The disadvantages, of course, is that you can't let the superconductor get too hot, you can't put too much electricity through the superconductor, and the superconductor will not work at high fields. So 11.5 is pretty much the threshold for this superconducting magnet. Beyond that, it would stop working. So instead of putting extra coils of superconducting magnet on the inside, we've gone for a very large bore, and inside of that bore, instead of putting a huge experiment, we put another magnet. That's the resistive side of the hybrid magnet. That resistive magnet, using the resistive magnet technology, is more expensive as far as electricity is concerned, but we can put as much electrical current through it as we want. It can survive in that 11.5 Tesla field, no problem, and that resistive magnet gets us the rest of the way to 45 Tesla inside the resistive magnet is the bore for our experiment. It's a 32 millimeter bore, but we don't use all 32 millimeters for the experiment. We use a lot of that for the infrastructure needed to keep the experiment at the right temperature, at the right pressure, and the right orientation. What's up there right now, which you can't see, is we have a cryostat that's keeping um, the atmosphere out. There's a vacuum. Then there's a nitrogen field at 70-ish uh, Kelvin. That keeps the majority of the heat from coming in from the outside. Then there's another layer of vacuum insulation. Then there is a liquid helium-4 containment system at 4.2 Kelvin. Inside of that is another uh, vacuum insulation. Inside of that is our experimental probe. The experimental probe allows us to get to even lower temperatures. This one will go to 1.2 Kelvin minimum. It's slightly warmer than our other helium-3 system. And inside of that is the probe with the experiment inside of another vacuum with a pressure cell inside of it to get it. I'm not certain what pressure they're working at right now, but they've crammed the pressure really high with hydrostatic force. Inside of that is the actual experimental um, material, which in this case is a high temperature superconductor. So we put a superconductor inside of a resistant magnet inside of a superconductor, making certain it's at high pressure inside of a vacuum at 1.2 Kelvin. Science, really cool stuff. So in order to keep this running, and I'm starting to speak a little louder because it's very loud out here, we have 4,000 gallons per minute of, super, of cold water coming in at about 10 centigrade. It's coming in at 500 PSI. We did not have the space to run the pipes properly because, you know, there's a superconductive magnet getting in the way. So this is a chaotic flow, not a laminar flow, so it's very loud and noisy. But that keeps the resistive magnet cold. All of that water gets piped back out, it goes through some chillers, and all of the heat ultimately gets dumped outside in the form of a little bit extra temperature and a little bit extra humidity for Tallahassee, which I'm certain all the citizens of Tallahassee love.